up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Disruption Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Noor. Welcome to episode 107. Chief Hall Sergeant Bidum Baby. It's your girl, Mo Easy. It's a prince. What's up? What's good? How's good. everybody feeling? We good, bro. You threw me off with uh Yeah. Bro, I threw my own self off. I was like, do I say name? Do I say episode title? I don't know. And then it just went through. I was like, in my head, I was like, say episode title first. And then I went, I'm Noor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah no, yeah that no, was good though man yeah it's been, a, it's been a quick day you know what i mean yeah yeah nice More. weather very nice mm. sun nice. setting later was it actually nice i didn't see anything else i didn't see the outside at all today pretty much why do you never know what the weather is like outside like do you not just step outside he, he works from home <laughs> yeah but like it's, it's a also where your room good. is positioned though yeah Something like that, yeah, because I got the outside area right outside my room, so I can't see the backyard kind of vibes, yeah. Yeah, but it's a bit weird that you don't even just step outside <laughs> to get fresh air in the morning or something. Like, how do you not know what the weather is like? How is me getting fresh air in the morning going to dictate the weather for the rest of the okay, day? Morning or during the day, during your lunch break? What, do you stay in your room all day? Hey, so Carlos, how is your day going? <laughs> yeah, not bad, bro. I yeah. think there's deeper issues going on on that side. <laughs> oh, I, I, hey. hey, let's send him to a different breakout room. Bro. Breakout room, yeah? <laughs> you all saw the day I come back when it's all oh, good. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but now we're here. So, what, hey, the sun was setting later, did you say? Yeah, like, obviously, well, like, obviously it's starting to set later because okay. because that's how the seasons work. But also, oh, no. like, you know, got, got home. I mean, finished working from home and then went out for a run. And... <laughs> <laughs> Nice save. <laughs> but no, went for a run. Weather was nice. It's like one of those weathers where you can run either in a t-shirt or your hoodie still on. Yeah. That kind of thing. Ooh, then, very yeah, nice. Yeah. Well. Actually, yeah, I take it back. I did see the weather a little bit because when I did my run as well on the treadmill, I was like, oh, snap. Actually, it's quite nice outside. Mm. I just mm. about doing the outside. You run. did your run the treadmill? Yeah, bro, because we were meant to start shooting at a certain time. So I said, hey, I don't even really have enough time to run outside, bro. But then... Uh, uh. You guys took your time anyway. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Is it me or like the wick is just flying, bro? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's quick back, bro. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't like it, bro. I was even the, looking at something. Mm. Yeah, go. The days are long, but the weeks are short. Mm. It's very confounding. I was, looking, I was looking in the podcast chat, the topics one. I was like, mm. oh, snap. Some of this stuff was sent after the last shoot. Mm. <laughs> I was like, mm. bro, that's old news now but it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. the span of a week i'm like well that's yeah. bad it's crazy man Things a lot has been happening right like just <laughs> even in terms of things to talk about there's just a lot happening a lot yeah i you, think it's because it's also still like good summerish weather in the other side of the world and it's opened up over there so there's actual action happening now happening again yeah yeah bro concerts man oh concerts it looks so good Overseas, they're living. Oh, London. Wait, what country are they living in? London's having a good time, bro. Burner Boy just had a concert, bro. Bro, they're having festivals. Whiskey sold out in like two bro. minutes. Whiskey's on his way. <laughs> I'm like, oh. What? Yeah. Even, nice. bro, I don't know if you saw New Orleans is having like two hurricanes are hitting them right now or something like that. And Lil Boosie still Whoa. put on his festival. Oh, damn. <laughs> Lil Boosie. Baby came out for it. The Baby came out for it. Like, these guys just had a good old time. Oh, wow. In the middle of a hurricane, cuss. Pam, this is how much has happened so quickly. Between last shoot and this shoot, the milk crate challenge happened. And it's done. <laughs> it's finished, yeah? Oh, was- I, I, was actually, I was actually on a hunt for some crates, bro, because I wanted to get a cracking with some Hood Olympics. But that was, you know, mm-hmm. if we're going to be let out. But uh, it doesn't look mm-hmm. like that anytime soon. So, That's uh, all news now. Oh, oh. Yeah. No, we can't drag this one like when everyone tried to drag, uh, was it Black Beatles or whatever it was? <laughs> that challenge went for a hot minute, man. <laughs> like Beatles in the CD. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> that girl yeah, was yeah. a real fat piece. So I'm like, bro, I have no idea you what. Guys, you, this day. you guys remember the uh, water bucket challenge or what? Ice bucket. Ice bucket. Uh, but that one had a business. cause to it. Yeah, damn, Carlos, bro, you ain't trying to see people with ALS like get healed in that, bro. Yeah. Ah, uh, damn. Yeah. I, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways yo you guys hey, real quick real quick bro i tried so hard in my head to remember the acronym i'm like i can't butcher this bro <laughs> <laughs> hey does anyone know what it stands for als i, I used to should. can't remember now something some syndrome in it mm. oh should we have als party when this is all done a lit scenario what's wrong with this guy <laughs> wait wait what? what 
<laughs> this guy? <laughs> I think that's how it works. No, you just call it a lit scenario and be like, <laughs> hashtag <laughs> ALS party. No, nah, it's not going to happen, bro. Are you getting cancelled? <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to get by the community, bro. Hey, Damn, why, you, why would you suggest such a thing? <laughs> hey, no, hey, that's all you, like, son, dog. Oh, my God. Yeah, but hey, on the reals though, yeah, what is cracking, man? What's up, bro? How we doing? What's what's yeah, the... Hey, I was gonna I was gonna talk about the bombing in Afghanistan, man. The bombing? Yeah. Mm. At the, the airport, airport, yeah. At the airport, yeah. Mm. You don't even hear about that. Yeah, oh, that actually, crazy. yes, Carl, get into this because I want to get into this on another lens as well. Yeah. To be honest, I don't really know much about it. I was just talking to one of my colleagues, right? And yeah, she was just like, because she yeah, she's from Afghanistan, she got like her cousins, relatives all over there. Wow. And uh yeah i forgot what that was, i was talking to her like two days before the bombing she was just on the phone to them checking up everything yeah the day before it uh, on and also the current day she was like i've not heard from them i don't know where they're at i don't know what's going on mm. and i was like that's 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 scary mm. man mm. right and it just made me think as well i'm like yeah we over here th- you know waking up thinking about what we're gonna get to work and so on. like these people don't care about school at the moment they don't care about work it's like it's pretty intense yeah man so it is bombing and, and the, and no, they're no, doing no. the blaming game as well. They're saying, oh, you did it. Oh, no, you did it as well. So they're trying to figure out, like, they don't even know who's actually behind it as well. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah so it was... The bombing stuff is very interesting because, like, obviously, like, as an Iraqi, it's like that's something that's happened to where my family was living quite a bit, right? And it's like, mm. obviously, in countries where there's poverty or hunger, like starvation type of hunger or... um even like corrupt governments and stuff, it's all slow. So it doesn't feel as like shock. It's not, not shocking, but it's, it's just a different sort of thing. Yeah. But the bombing Mm. one is just so sudden and so quick and unpredictable. And so like, I remember when the U S invaded Iraq in 2003, like my parents were on the phone to their family while it was happening and like we were on tv basically watching the bombings happen live it was very weird because they would basically broadcast what's happening there on american tv because we were living in america at the time and like i remember my parents be like talking to their family and being like yo this area is gonna get hit right now so be careful or that area is bad." and then like you can hear from their side of the phone like things shattering and stuff yeah yeah. and it's just like it, yeah, it's a very because you're like, there's no predictability to this thing. It's like, oh, we're trying to you know bomb this one person, this one politician, but we'll take out mm. five thousand others in, in yeah, the like process as well. Yeah, well, yeah. This is, I'm trying to understand. And at, at, a, at a place that way, everyone is gathered, man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think they recorded seventy two died from that, and a lot more injured as well. So. Yeah. So that one was at the airport or the U.S. base, one of them, right? I'm not too sure. Airport. 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 It's but weird. Or something like 13 U.S. soldiers died? Yeah, what the? Yeah, yeah. I think U.S. soldiers got injured as well during that yeah. process as well. Yeah. yeah. But the bombing was from Taliban. It wasn't from America. Nah, but the Taliban's are blaming someone else. They're saying it wasn't them. Yeah, of course. Bro, that <laughs> reminds me of, um, I saw a post literally just recently, um, Boko Haram in Nigeria. Or around about Africa as well at this point. Um, it was actually this one was specifically in Nigeria. Um, they had a ransom for someone, and the person sent the ransom money. I think it was like five million naira or whatever. And then mm. um, the person they got obviously they got the person back and whatever. And the ransom money was fake. And Boko Haram puts out a statement: "Go we'll punish you." <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> so imagine they put out another statement that God will punish you <laughs> for oh everything. My days. Are you serious? Hey, what's the naira to do- US dollar kind of rate? Uh, I don't want to say that on um, camp. People can find that out if they want to, bro. <laughs> dust. But you, bro. So but five million dollars and they still had to fake it, is what you're saying. But cheeks, man. You don't you don't want to find out what that is. Yeah. But wow, that's that's a madness what's going on. Yeah, I'm yeah. actually just reading on it now, like just looking at some different stuff. Yeah, yeah man. It was interesting, right? So like uh, what's his name? Joe Biden gets up after, I think it was after this situation happens and he starts talking to like the people and like, you know, um, you know how they've always got a, America is politically a Christian country. Mm. And so they've got to like appease that uh, fan base, I guess, or whatever you want to call it when it comes to politics. Um, so he gets up and he starts like quoting some scripture from Isaiah chapter six, I think it was. 
I don't know if you guys saw this. No. And basically, he's like, it's, it's a scripture where like Isaiah's right. It's about like God saying like war and destruction is going to happen to this place. I believe I might be messing it up a little bit. Like war and destruction is about to happen in this place. And um, Isaiah's saying like, send us Lord to go preach to these people, right? And so this guy gets up, uh, Joe Biden, and he's like, starts quoting the scripture and he starts talking about how for the longest the US and the US army has been saying like, send us Lord to all these places to go to war. <laughs> and I was like, bro, how did these guys like so bold faced just go <laughs> up, twist scripture and like use it for their political purposes? Are you telling me he read scripture, like he quoted it mm. and still just twisted up the whole and thing? just did whatever he wanted. Like he just read it out of context. You know, like he took the one scripture that was like, you know, like if you, if you find one scripture that says like, I don't know, don't, you know, don't clap in a circle, right? And then you're like, and that's why we run around in circles. It's like, <laughs> you that's literally what he's done. Wow. <laughs> oh, man. But the worst part oh. is, okay, you just say, yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro, people are like, mm, mm, so good. Come yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. <Pricey. laughs> All right, what else happened, bro? Uh, Shakari Richardson got smoked. <laughs> that was before we shot last episode. And then afterwards, she has been very irritating since, bro. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting on your nerves, bro. I, I just honestly, like, first of all, for me, I'm, and I've said this a million times, I love cocky athletes, yeah? I love it. Like, talk a big game, but then live up to it, yeah? Put on I a big game, too. You you got you didn't lose, bro. You got washed. Ninth out of nine is a is a washing, right? Solid. But then what I didn't like is afterwards, like all her digs at the Jamaicans. Yeah. I don't know if you saw. She kept liking all these tweets about like, but yeah, you know, Jamaicans this and Jamaicans that. And then one of them was like just mad disrespectful. It was like um, what was it? It was like someone tweeted something about like how are you gonna lose like this to people that still walk around barefoot selling coconuts on the beach. And she liked that tweet. Some, like literally something at that, mm. almost that wording, right? And I was like, bro, I know she's 20 or 21, mm. but that's just stupid. And like, that says more about your character than anything. Think about it. Like rappers, unless they want to be petty, right? When they're in beef and stuff like that, mm. they will see their name get quoted a lot and people will be taking digs at the other party for mm. them. Mm. But for the most part, they don't like those things because they know what that looks like. They know what that leads to. If they want mm. to, then they choose to do so as well. But you would yeah. only be doing that, you know what I mean? Like, that's a bit different when they're on the strong foot, at least if they're winning the battle or the beef or something. Mm. But to be someone that gets smoked mm. <laughs> and then still be talking the hardest, mm. nah. Yeah, it means you, you the Jamaicans didn't even say nothing about her, bro. Like, I, they didn't really care about her. Like, bro, they've got kids. Like I said, they're she, winning. They're yeah, doing the thing, bro. She, while Shakira is having her uh, post-run interview, she, she, um, she, uh, what's, what did I just say? <laughs> Shelly and Fries. Yeah, just w- walks past. Mm. Smiley, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I think, yeah, she's just hurt, to be honest. That's yeah. all it is. And she's... Well, I don't know, man. Okay, is that is that a feminine thing? Like, yeah. to react like that? Because she was, like, liking tweets about how Shelly and Price was, like, how she looks and stuff like that as well. I think it's just a young, like a young person thing, to be honest, because she just, Mm. she seems a bit immature in that sense, where it's like she has no control over her emotions. Mm. I feel like just because, um, you know, she is this athlete, we've kind of forced her to be in some sort of like age bracket, but we've forgotten she still hasn't gone past the age of maturity yet, you know? So it's like, yeah, she's a great athlete or whatever, but her mind is probably still back in that like, you know, young teen, early adult type of phase. So all of this stuff that she's doing and because it's being like publicized like a thousand times now, everyone knows who she is because of, you know, her trials and all that stuff. So maybe she's she's got a big head for one and she's just hurt for two. So it's just everything together. That is kind of true because, yeah, you get the gas that you're given before the Olympics, like, Mm. you know, killing it but there's a different level that comes with competitive sports at that kind of a scale like mm. to now to go from being the talk of your town your state possibly mm. to now like the world is also looking at you as well um these other races have been at that for the, for the longest they've been mm. the talk of the world for the longest kind of thing so it's like a loss for them they'll take away grace you know what i mean mm. or, or whatever that is 
But to be at this stage where, especially, I, I don't want to get too talking about oh, where she's from kind of thing, but like from the kind of background that she has as well kind of thing, like it is that like, you know what I mean? Braggadocious. Talk, talk, yeah. Kind of, you know what I mean? So it's like not really being a mature athlete is more so what it is as opposed to a person. Because I think on a, on, a, on a human level, you should just be mature in that kind of a sense. But as a mature athlete, I don't think she's been able to get to that level just yet kind of thing because she's just starting her career essentially. So these are the... Mm-hmm. These are the seasoned veterans in that. Bro, if they lose, they, they push it, bro. They'll come and talk that talk in the next race. Mm. I mean, I don't know, because there's, there's still a lot of young, young athletes as well. Like, when I was watching, like, 20... Know, they don't lose. Huh? They don't lose. I don't know. <laughs> lose or not, this is the way they conduct, uh, conduct themselves during interviews and so on. You're like, yo, this is... This is this person is mature and in terms of how they handle this, right? Mm-hmm. And then I watch her interview and I'm gonna come back, you know what I mean? You can head on me. I was like, damn, who's this? <laughs> like, yeah. Cause you know, at the same yeah. time, it yeah, could be know, like right. a personality. Like, I'm not saying it is, I'm saying it could be a personality thing. Cause like there are athletes that it's like they are mature in age, like older, and they're right. still immature athletes. Like I'll, for me, one of the examples is Conor McGregor. It's like you see him again in his recent fights and stuff, and he He's, the guy's leg is half broken and he's sitting on the thing getting interviewed and he's still talking crap about the guy's wife and all this stuff, you know? And so I'm like, how much more mature could someone be as an athlete or is it just your personality kind of thing? Combination, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. combination is important. I like um, how, like, even smaller competitions are getting a bit more clout as well now. It's like, you only really hear about these artists and the exploits when it comes to the Olympics and then, like... You know how the commentators will be talking during Olympics and they're like, um, oh, current number one reigning champion. I'm like, bro, what do you mean? They're like, what do you mean current? Like the Olympics is just based on who? Uh, yeah, but I'm like, oh, snap, these guys be racing regularly, fam. Mm-hmm. Or like competing regularly. It's like, I like how all these other events also, like I'm, Peter is an example, like mm-hmm. I'm hearing about what's going on in the little whatever. I don't know how to pronounce that. Com- they were, they're running in, in Paris. In Paris, all that kind of stuff. It's like, and I'm seeing it in my feet a whole much, lot more. So I'm like, oh, this is sick, man. Like just being able to actually like these artists are getting recognition for what they do, man. Like yeah, on yeah. a basis, it's not. It removes that mentality that people generally have. Like, oh, you guys perform four, four, uh, once every four years, guys. It's like, nah, bro. They're putting in work. They actually don't, yeah, because yeah. they do the same people go off and you know and start running two weeks later. Mm, the you know what I mean, I was like, oh snap! Like you guys been running, running hard, huh? and you guys like meet up again. It's not like, hey, I'll see you in the next four years. I'll see you, you there. And now nah, you have another chance to be there in two weeks time. You yeah. know what I mean? I wonder if there's more events, athletic events around the Olympics that after than the rest of the time in the four years. Because it could also just be like those events just, you know, gaining off the clout of the Olympics while people are still interested in athletics. I guess it depends on the cycle of those events too when they are. I mean, Commonwealth Games is, is on the opposite cycle to um to Olympics as well. So yeah, there is slight ones that are regular here and there, but I think, yeah, you're, you're probably right in terms of these other smaller ones. Yeah, just back off, off the back of the cloud of the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Why not, man? Yeah. yeah. It was cool. In other sports news, uh, Del Curry is leaving his wife. So. <laughs> That's the sports news. Man. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. What's, I thought, bro, I thought you're going to talk about Ronaldo going back to... Uh, oh, shoot. Sure. This is the most exciting summer in football in a Honestly. long time. Whoa. I feel like God is just playing uh, FIFA manager mode. <laughs> manager mode. <laughs> yeah. And he's doing whatever he wants in his my career. <laughs> like... The two biggest players in the world have moved clubs. Yo. They're talking about Mbappe might move to Real Madrid as well. Real Madrid. He is going to Real Madrid, I reckon, yeah. I hope so at this point. I just want it all to shake up. This is very exciting. Yeah, football is looking a bit tasty right now. I'm not going to lie. Very. To be honest, Cristiano Ronaldo move is much more exciting than Messi's to me. Because this is like... So, obviously, for context, Cristiano Ronaldo starts his career in Portugal. He's Portuguese. Becomes a superstar at Manchester United, moves to Real Madrid, moves to Juventus, and now he's in probably the last two competitive years of his career, and he's moved back to Manchester United, right? Which is a nice fairy tale ending kind of thing. Yeah. But in the morning before they announced it was Manchester United, they were saying he would go to Manchester City, yeah. right? Which depends on your loyalties and stuff. I'm always the type of person where I don't believe athletes should play for their. Uh, like the real rival of the club where they, you know, have or at any point have played for. Mm. Um, but I was like, ooh, this would be interesting, all this kind of thing. Is it just, you know, is it oil money just talking, that kind of thing? And then by the end of the day, Manchester United just put out an Instagram post and they're like, Cristiano Ronaldo, 
And I was like, oh, shoot. He's very excited. But if he wins there, bro, that's, that's a beautiful fairy. Like, no, nah, they'll still finish fourth. <laughs> <laughs> the squad is not competing. To be honest, that's why if you win City, bag, you got it. Mm. They win. Oh, yeah. But City's going to win regardless. That's on KD Golden yeah, State. Imagine like, Adam Nalda there. Wins. Yeah. Was there a reason why he moved or was it just like a... I think, he, I think for him, going to Italy was... Um, like how many leagues can I conquer in Europe of major leagues, right? And so he conquered the league there, but he couldn't conquer Europe with them. And so I think it definitely wasn't going to happen. I don't think the squad has enough depth and all that kind of stuff. And so I think he's just in his last phase before he just sells out for money, which he should, to be honest. Like all of them should. Once you're 39 you should just go to either the Middle East or America and get the bag. Just get, get the bag. Yeah, Bro, they'll pay you $20 million for half a season. That, that, that's what the old dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, cool, 38. Let me go over there, get the bag. Yes. Yeah. Where did he go play? Who? Yes, sir. He's in China, actually. China, yeah. He's in Asia. Oh, oh no, Japan, Japan. Oh, like, Asia, yeah. Yeah. In yeah. Yes, sir, man. Funny guy, bro. Yeah. Bro. That's so interesting. Fun. The reason why um the Ronaldo, uh, Ronaldo one is probably even crazy is because it is that kind of like book um book ending to everything, right? Mm-hmm. But this was a uh, the heartbreak is why it was a bigger kind yeah. of why it was big as well. It's like oh snap, this is a guy who's wanted to do this certain task for all his his whole career. Yeah, and now he's just having to move somewhere else or something. But mm-hmm. now this is like I bet you you did a madness here. Yeah, yeah. What you can do in the final years, but I was up. So. It's also nice because Ronaldo like. I think he's only 15 or 16 goals away from having 100 Premier League goals. So in England. And so he'll definitely end up having that this season. He'll definitely hit that. Which will be if like... You know, he wasn't liked for a little bit. Is that correct? He wasn't Sorry. liked? Yeah. I remember people not liking him. Oh, for- there was a time actually. Yeah. I think he's one of those guys. It's him and Messi. Maybe more so him. Where it's like, you're either a fan of this guy or this guy. Mm. Not so many people are like, you know a champ like just champion both of them yeah um yeah but i think he has a bit more arrogance but more all that he's the more playboy kind of guy but he can pack it up oh. <laughs> <laughs> he can do all that like he can definitely back it up yeah oh i, I keep hearing <laughs> pack. <laughs> what are you hearing? pack not back no <laughs> pack it up back it up <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, that'll be interesting to see, bro. Yeah. So you talk about Del Curry, is it? Yeah, man. Um, I don't know if you guys saw this Del Curry. So Steph and uh what's the brother's name? Warren. Sadel? No, that's no. his sister. Is, is Steph, isn't it? Um Seth. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Seth. yes, Seth. So Steph and Seth Curry's dad um is leaving their mother after i don't know 35 40 years of being married to each other because she cheated on him allegedly with a is it nfl some nfl player with a ex nfl player a white ex nfl player oh why you gotta throw white in i don't know i just felt like being spicy yeah it's a bit spicy (laughs) wow Man. And it's not even like a famous ex NFL player. It's just an ex NFL. It's like you know how like NFL rosters are like forty men on each team. It's got some forty. Men. No, no, bro. It legit yeah. is. <laughs> it's like legit forty people, and then they have another twenty guys that are just like the guys that train against them. Yeah, makes no sense, man. So I'm pretty sure he's one of those guys. Oh, bro, she's even young though. Because I saw that I'm like, she's a good looking Why would you? Yeah, she's just yeah, she looks good, be young, eh? Mm. Bro, how? How? So, so why, two, why did this make news though? There's two things to me, right? Uh-huh. One, like apparently, people uh-huh. so because he's divorcing her and he's saying she should not be entitled to any alimony or like any uh spousal support kind of thing, right? Because Which yeah. I completely agree with because her son. One of her sons is already making $45 million a year on his salary alone, bro. That son can feed my wife. <laughs> I don't need me, all right? But, um, <laughs> but apparently, it's 
known in their family that he's been cheating on her for years as well like it's kind of like not a thing and then i was like yo this is very interesting this is all based on what i read yeah like start going down reddit loopholes bro (laughs) yeah like what's what's the what's the nerve to then go oh my god you cheated on me after after that (laughs) i've been doing whatever i want that is a guy thing to do bro when you you, is very it is is a guy thing get something on your gal you make it look like it's the end of the world bro Mm. Yeah. you're shocked oh my god i can't believe it wow <laughs> how could you do that I, I, did, I did everything for you <laughs> yeah but we know that one's not true like i don't think the man cheated because like you know how uh factually black men don't cheat so that's a lie black men don't oh. cheat nah black men don't cheat if, if it's true that might be a black boy right there bro i don't know man that's a and he looks like a good guy he's okay, a good okay. guy he does look they because they're just like an like old Christian couple. I thought they would just oh, go to their church. I thought I thought the dad just holds his Bible like this to church. Bro, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, me too, bro. Bro, mm. it's sad. Bro. I don't like how maybe maybe there's no real increase or change in how many stories like this we hear of long term relationships. It's probably just that there's not much else that we are seeing that things just make bigger news now. I agree. Like damn, man! I just keep hearing like st- strong couples and for long terms as well. Mm. Like, yeah, it's kind of sad, bro. It's, it's it's cool. Yeah. So I was actually gonna ask you guys. So like, what do you guys think in that situation? Let's say it is a one-off. Like, let's let's say he. We don't know anything about if his cheating is true or not. Hers. She says that it's they've been. She's been seeing this guy after they had agreed to break up. So there's that, right? But um. Cap. let's say you're that let's say you're that age been married for that many years you find out your partner has cheated on you once right do you leave or do you just feel like nah bro like we're just too old to do this dating thing again because this is after like three decades in more in yeah. so long, three decades plus we're gonna have to go to counseling, marriage counseling at that point, and just yeah. work it out, especially if it's a one off. I mean, one off could be as lethal as a serial cheater as it well. Could be. It like, could be. It could be. The one off could have been <laughs> I put in five hours of work, bruv. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. another one. That's actually very important. <laughs> you know, like, they're, both, they're both lethal, bro. <laughs> It's one and punch shot to the heart compared to five. You're still dead, bro. Daniel, and the thing is, you don't know what she's saying, bro. She could be saying, this is the best night of my life. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, bro, bro. Like, I don't know. It's one of those ones where, you, honestly, I can't even fully give an answer unless I'm in that situation. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's, yeah, like we said, three decades plus of love and, and memories and all that kind of stuff, yeah. I mean, yeah. We, right? If it's mm-hmm. a healthy relationship. So for... T- Right now, I'm looking at a, what, five years something, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe, but it's like, after three decades plus, bro, you, you, that's your life with that. Three decades, yeah. four adult children. Mm. Uh, high school sweetheart, I, I, I read apparently as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I don't know, yeah, kind of, I would like to hope that I lean towards what Mawa said of like, mm-hmm. yeah, in that situation, it would be like, all right, let's actually work this out. Where did we go wrong? Like, what the heck happened? Like, what's, yeah. what's going on? But we don't know if it's what. Yeah, you just you just don't know, man. They, yeah. Yeah. Think about it. The person could have cheated, and it's literally a dumb decision. Could have been years in the making. You know what I mean? The uh, fact that it's the same in all of these scenarios is they still cheated, but there's differences in how that all happened. How you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just. Uh, I think you, if if like, like you just got to get them back one time at that age, and then you have to get counselling and just agree that it's okay. <laughs> Will Smith, bro, bad marriage for life, yeah? Yeah. 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 Bro, there was the funniest Twitter thread about this thing, right? I think I sent wow. it to the guys. Yeah. But basically, someone goes, like that, like a news thing goes, Del, and Cur- Del Curry and Sonia Curry to divorce after 30 plus years of marriage. This guy replies, bud, let me tell you something. It's like, this is like 40 tweets in a row, yeah? You don't want to be out here. You think you want to be out here because you're not out here. When you get out here, you're not going to want to be out here no more. <laughs> Last time you was out here, <laughs> <laughs> last time you were out here out here was different you think it's something better i come to let you know the best you're gonna get is what you already got i don't know why you don't want to do the work you're gonna come out here and you're not gonna like it all they do is start podcasts and talk about plate fixing <laughs> 14 minutes out here you're gonna start saying these females if you can make it work do so love the wife of your youth 
Hold up. This one killed me. You don't want to be out here learning TikTok dances and falling <laughs> off milk crates. <laughs> there was for some of them. They're pegging dudes out here, bro. No, no, that one was you don't have the cholesterol to be out here. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey, but to be honest, hey, the, you're not built for this big man. <laughs> hey, the game is different now, bro. Oh, yeah. Instead of you I love it. Up, you come out, the game is different. I'm telling you. I think especially with their kind of status and the world that they're in, it would be so much harder to mm. try and actually find a genuine relationship, you know, with someone who isn't trying to get with you because of your kids, because of your wealth and stuff. So True. I don't know for them. I just, yeah, but then it's a different story because he's been cheating. And the fact that this guy wants to throw it away she, because she, she, she cheated once. And from what I've read, he's been doing it multiple times. That just shows you. Marla says, Marla. something else, bro. Men are something else. Wait, hold on. What was that, Daniel? I said, Marla said stuff allegedly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she just no, said... There's, no, there's not alleged. I, I believe that she did it out of hurt, out of anger, because she was done wrong. Because women... Wait, wait, I just definitely don't think so. No I reason, think she just so. likes the ex. Huh? I definitely don't think... I, I just think she likes the NFL player. She just went for it. That's legit what it is. Yeah, I, I agree. Know, but, you agree? Because this guy's a champ, bro. <laughs> you don't that guy's a champion, bro. Yeah, but then you also got to think, like, after 30 years being with someone, yeah. you're seeing so many people in your lifetime, you know, you're seeing people more successful than your partner, people more, you know, um, better looking than your partner, people who will treat you better than your partner. You know, that's why they say you have to wake up and choose to love that person every day because you are going to meet people who are going to exceed the expectations. Because, I mean, after 30 years, your partner is going to change, you know, and they might not be doing the things that you want them to do. They might not be, you know, the same person that you met. They definitely not the same person you met in high school. So it's like, yeah, you're going to meet some new fish in the sea and you're going to be like, I want to test it, but don't. Because it's not worth it. Don't test it, but... You raised yeah. something interesting. It's like, yeah, in a in a long term relationship, it is that constant decision to choose to love that person. And yeah. I feel like what catches people slipping sometimes is where they don't put the um the effort behind making that decision. Sometimes, like you you think about it, yeah, you're in a long term relationship with your partner, right? <clears throat> and maybe there's been there's pressures on different sides, but you constantly make the decision to um to 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 to, to choose to love your partner, to ignore those distractions pressures, temptations, all that kind of stuff, yeah? Um, mm -hmm. There's a verse in the Bible that says, he that breaks the hedge, uh, or when the hedge is broken, the serpent strikes, yeah? Mm -hmm. You decide to one day entertain something, yeah? yeah? Very, very bad waters you stepped into kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not even talking physical anything just yet. It's mm -hmm. even just a flirt, flirt a little bit to that person that's been showing you a bit of attention. <laughs> You've constantly <laughs> blocked, ignored, and, and all that kind of stuff, yeah? It's not even just think like another person it's if within yourself you suddenly go my partner is kind of dumb even like if, you know what i mean mm. yeah. like even once you start allowing oh they actually don't add much value yeah right it's That's like true. as soon as you feel that it's a risky risky spot it is entertaining those kind of things yeah it does lead to a problem i think there's a difference between because i mean okay now we're saying that that's toxic yeah because imagine yeah. seeing these things but then because of long-term relationship put up with it there's a difference between like seeing something or a crack in the in the hedge hmm. and trying to fix it as opposed to prodding it you know what hmm. i mean as opposed to actually starting to poke that thing and now it becomes yeah. a situation compared to constructively trying to fix that that thing that you've analyzed or noticed yeah i think actually and a lot of the time yeah for for this uh like if you're noticing it in a negative way a lot of time it's actually because you're comparing your partner to someone else comparing it and so you're going oh it, he is not as funny as this guy he and then you start going he's not funny yeah right and, or that kind of yeah <laughs> because there is the reality of like yeah if you're not comparing to anyone else and you just go okay this person is not mature right like that's that's a good realization yeah, yeah. as long as it's not because you're going oh he's not mature like that guy mm -hmm. is there, like that girl or whatever is this is there such thing as comparing it to a standard versus comparing to someone i think it should be compared to a standard or else you're yeah. walking and you're both you're both not striving towards something i think that standard is what's important to be honest man yeah. for relationship for and for the most part the standard is something that you guys set in the beginning yeah. of your relationship and continually develop as well as you as you grow together yeah. so it's yeah. like holding someone accountable to the values that you guys have is what you should always still come back to at the end of the day but once you start using external validations kind of thing that's your now you're messing up bro you know what i mean like you're you're deviating 
from away from what you guys have kind of set up as your relationship you don't <laughs> the person that is funny or whatever um that you're looking at like oh my partner's not funny bruv is beating his wife bro <laughs> you know what i mean like you there's you can't look at any other external standard or something because you really don't know what they've said different, to yeah. different man for sure that's, that's true, true. That's i've cool. been watching like i've been watching this i haven't been watching actually my sister's been watching and she just got me into it but it's a show called put a ring on it um and it's about like couples who have been together for a very long time but they haven't like made the okay. taken the step of actually the guy hasn't taken the step to make mm-hmm. it official because you know all the women come and they're like i want to get married i want to have the kids with him but he doesn't want to make that or it's like i don't trust him you know and whatever so they're having relationship issues and there's this one couple they've been together for 14 years so they come on the show and so what they do is they come on the show and then they date other people and it's basically for them to realize what they have so like it's like you date other people outside of your relationship and then in the end you decide do I want to explore with you know this other person or other people or do I have everything that I want in my partner I just need to you know work Mm -hmm. on it and I was just like I was just I was so like mind boggled. I was like, why would anyone go mm. on a show like that? If you've been together for 14 years and you haven't come to that realization that you guys want to, you know, commit to each other, that you want to communicate properly, that you want to, um, you know, move forward and make it official. If you don't want to make it official, fair enough, but it's like having that agreement that I'm yours, you're mine type of situation and having to come to a show and date other people. And then like wanting those other people to make you realize what you have in your partner. I was like, just don't be together then. What, yeah. what's, the point, what's the point in that? If it has to come to that point, then you shouldn't be together in the first place, you know? And I, it was just ridiculous. Two, two of the couples out of three end up getting engaged afterwards. Yeah. And I was like... <laughs> That's a dumb explain idea. Why? That's a dumb idea. Because it's like, you're going to spend two weeks with this new person and you're not going to experience any challenging things. You're just going to do fun things for two exactly. weeks. So of and course, you're going to end up thinking this person's a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's what ended up happening. One of the couples, the guy ended up cheating on his partner. The 14, the ones that were together for 14 years, he ended up cheating with his partner oh after four goodness. dates with the other person. And I was like, obviously you're going to cheat because you're having a fun time. You know, you've gone on four dates and it's just been fun, fun, fun. No, yeah, having... idiot. What are you doing? <laughs> Why is there a clap? <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> Yes. Look at this guy. My guy had four good dates. Luna Park, bro. Bowling. And he also just chucked in a little cheeky park lunch date there. And he thought, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See what it was. Yeah. What? Dude, this is the one. <laughs> I mean, since we're on the topic of this, I think myself and the lads kind of spoke about it already. It Sorry? Oh, you have that too? Yeah, yeah. So one of the guys sent this in the group chat. Put all my girls that act like a wife without the ring. Mm. Yeah. So one of the guys sent that to the group chat and then, yeah, us and the boys were just having a chat about it. But Ma, we can start us off. What do you think of that statement? Yeah, it's true. Uh, why why would he buy the cow if he gets the milk for free? That's literally the saying that we hear yeah, everywhere. Slow down, slow down. Why would he buy the cow <laughs> if he gets the milk for free? Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I think bye, it bye, makes bye. sense. <laughs> wait, why would it he does. buy it? It does, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's like I'm great it makes sense but it doesn't make sense no no no. so it's like i'm providing him with everything okay, he needs with uh, everything, everything he needs, needs. Yeah. So he doesn't need to buy the sauce because i'm already giving him everything you know i think it makes sense it's yeah, yeah no, it does it does, it does. Explained it. but no it, it definitely makes sense because it's like being a wife and being a girlfriend is different there's different responsibilities as a girlfriend i shouldn't have to cook for you i shouldn't have to clean for you i shouldn't have to pick up after you i shouldn't have to do any of that we just are there to build a connection, all right? I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing for myself. I'm working for myself. I'm cleaning after myself. I'm doing all of those duties for myself. If I'm going to do anything for you, it's because I love you enough to do it. Mm. So it's like once I become a wife, then you can talk about, oh, yeah, you know, let's clean after me, cook for me, do that type of stuff. But it's like I'm just your girlfriend. We're, we're supposed to be building together. We're supposed to be doing something together. You can't have those expectations on me before you put a ring on it, buddy. That's Buddy, the, 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 the example I can think of is blue therapy, yeah? Like that couple, Chairman and Paul. Like, I felt like Chairman was acting like the wife in a relationship, you know? Yeah, I mean? sure. She was like taking care of the, like her partner's sister's kids, mm. you know what I mean? And going into the house and go, I'm like, I'm, I'm not down, or like, you, you're That's the girlfriend. Sorry? That's too much. 
yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's like what I'm saying. But Loki, if your wife, I, I can see why you would do so. Yeah. Right? But as a girlfriend, I'm going to say, hey, big man, like tell your sister to take care of her own damn kids. You know what I mean? Yeah, because as a wife, I've, I'm have i marrying into your family. But as a girlfriend, yeah, exactly. that's what I'm saying. it doesn't go beyond us. That proximity that kind of breeds that kind of complacency. And I think that's the tricky line what happens when couples move in with each other when they're, when they're dating. Because yes. you yes. get comfortable, like you said. It's not saying... I mean, I personally don't advise to do that if you are in a relationship only. Um, obviously, some people have completely different opinions towards that, but that's why that's why I see breeze this kind of a situation. People are just comfortable; they 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 they're used to what they're doing, and then they're just thinking. I mean, then again, that's what we we think that the standard is that yeah, you should get married; that the goal is to get married, right? For some people, that's true. Doesn't even that doesn't hold the weight. It's just a legal thing that they've ticked off for some people. Mm. But, I mean, you know, there's and, that. And you're right when you say moving in together, because you, when you move in together, it's really hard to kind of separate that being a girlfriend versus being a wife, being a boyfriend versus being a husband. Because mm -hmm. once you live it together, it's hard to say, oh, you clean up your own mess. Or you do this. Or you know what I mean? Or you cook your own food. You know what I mean? So it's like you have to do it for the both of y'all, right? But which means now you're kind of stepping into that wifey duties, that husband duties there. But obviously when you guys are apart, it's so easy for you to kind of stay within your roles there. Mm. you know what i mean so why is it such a common thing that guys don't like want to pursue marriage if the girlfriend is acting like a wife i don't think it's that common i don't think it's that common i think there's just people that are like that and people that are not mm. like and because i think there are also girls that don't feel the rush to lock it down for themselves they might feel it in terms of society mm. but like i don't know i think most guys that don't have like is in are in a relationship where they're like, my relationship is my only option. I don't think they're trying to stretch it out that long. Mm -hmm. Like it's a tough one. Because oh. what's the value in adding like stretching yeah. it out for that long? That's what I was gonna say. I don't think it's funny how you say that. Yeah, sorry, go. Yeah, I'll say it real quick. I was gonna say I don't think it's a common scenario that you see in pro in a committed relationship where mm -hmm. both parties are committed to the cause. Mm -hmm. If there is, a, it's got a relationship label, but someone is still exploring options. Obviously, it's gonna it's gonna um drag out for the longest. So I don't think it's a common thing for guys. Mm -hmm. It's just a thing like Nor said of people who they just don't view that in that way. They're not gonna pursue a marriage in that relationship. Mm -hmm. But for most people who are coming at it from a committed point of view, like we're doing this together. That's going to be their goal for the most part, yeah. Yeah, and no, I agree with that. But at the same time, I do see a lot of guys who, especially the ones a couple of years older, they kind of get that, they get comfortable a little bit, you know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like, oh, yeah, now nah, we're living together. Oh, yeah, now nah, this, I got kids going on. And I'm like, cuz, it's been five years and y'all yeah. ain't married, huh? Bro, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <that> thing, yeah? <laughs> huh? Bro, this is the co the conversation was have, bro, me, me, Carlos, and his sister, we have this funny thing going on, yeah? We call these guys... <laughs> kings in the community yeah and we came to the conclusion that there's no more kings bro <laughs> because all the guys that we thought yo you're killing it working good job great relationship they've been committed yeah. for four years some of them maybe they have a kid on the way that but they're providing for the child healthy homes all of them break up we say yeah there's no more kings bro <laughs> there's no more kings in the streets no more kings in the street because they get bro, my claimed, bro. bro my sister killed us yeah Cause we brought up a name on like, yo, he's the only king. My sister's like, him? Let me tell you something. I said, nah. <laughs> <laughs> the towel, crazy white flag, bro. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Then he said, okay, cool. We're done here, bro. No more kings in the community, bro. <laughs> yeah. But it is that thing, I guess, in those kind of situations, those are people that have been together for the longest getting comfortable. Yeah. And then now it gets to the point where they think, what do I want for my life? And you're like, yeah. oh. That's a long time. I also think just giving yourself too much time to make a decision is not a good idea. Yeah. Like, I think my dad said that a lot of time where he's just like, you know, like make decisions quickly and make decisions on how you feel right now and make wise ones, you know, calculate yeah. risks and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, make decisions now and I live with them. And, and if you do them based on how you feel now, you won't regret it later. You know, yeah, if you also just make the decision completely with how I think it should turn out. Mm you might end up regretting it because you didn't properly let it happen, you know? But 14 years, bro, 14 years, that's a whole kid that's going bad. into the, the high school. Yeah, yeah, that's, oh my. I just want to ask him, like, why? Like, why? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, because like, normally I, I'm okay with, like, 
six, seven years if people started dating and in high school or end of high school. Because mm. to me, that's a long time for, for adults, right? Like if you used to meet someone at like 23, seven years, that's a long time, right? You don't need more than two and a half, three years, mm. you know? But yeah. if you meet someone <laughs> at 18, 17, seven years, cool. But even then, if you met someone at 18 and 14 years later, bro, yeah. you guys are in your 30s. Oh, uh, yeah, that's... That's believe. Weird. Like, where else do you go at that point? You don't know anything else in the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 23 and seven years later, Nah, that's long, bro. All you need is two, three years, yeah. Gotcha. That's all you 20, need. 26, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. No, all you need is two, three years, bro. That's all I need, bro. That's all I need. Now I just need to make a choice. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, what's that NSG song? Options, yeah? So, no, no, hey, no, no, select your character. Like you just trying to figure out which one's going to go, bro. You get me. I, I literally am. Oh, pro, pro fishing in that. Come on. <laughs> Oh God! Right. Hey man, let's talk about the talk of the talk of that needs to be yes. about, bro. Let's talk about that talk. Let's talk about that thing, man. Oh snap! <sighs> oh, okay, wait. Well, before that, before that, before that, before that, Ma, what are you saying about this? This is the wrong generation for people with good hearts because that actually kind of ties in a little bit to what we we're saying just before. With what? What just, does it tie into? With the relationship stuff. Yeah, no, I was just saying like Twitter is just always filled with all these people who just seem like they're genuine people who just get screwed over. Like even in business, business as well, relationships, like family, like all of these good people just, you know, looking for good things in life and they're just being hurt. Like they're just getting hurt. But how? Because everyone's that, just on like, a lot of people are on their selfish build type of thing. Like I'm building for me. Um, you know, I'm looking out for me type of thing. So it's like you come across a good person and then you have a bad person and then they're ruining them, like just in terms of like, you know, heartbreak, in terms of like not helping someone else build up their wealth as well. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I saw it and I heard it somewhere and I was like, this is so true. Like it really is not the greatest like time for good people with good hearts, you know? Was there, a good, was there a good time for good people? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Two things I was going to say. One thing is there's actually never a good time for people with good hearts in general. Mm. Being a, having a good heart almost never directly benefits you anyways. It's always the other person that's benefiting from your goodness more so, right? Mm. It's, your conscience is, it has that kind of clear thing. I was going to say comically as well, bruv, it's because everyone's read 48 Laws of Power, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yo you know what's mad that book is still selling like crazy i um what's her name jackie hill perry just released a book called holier than thou yeah and she was celebrating it's in the top 50 best sellers in america or something like that and i'm looking through the rest of the rest of the list still top like 30 is 48 laws of power <laughs> i was like bro this is ruining people's brains <laughs> Oh gosh! Everyone's, everyone's read it by now, man. So hey, everyone, everyone's embodying all their powers. That's such an interesting statement, though. Like, yeah, wrong generation to have a good heart. Mm. I don't think it's it's not even necessarily the that it's the wrong generation. It is just brought out there a bit more. I think yeah, it's, it is, yeah. There is that kind of a safe space kind of being created where people feel able to be vulnerable to just the general public as well, mm. as opposed to like private confidants or even a therapist or kind of thing. But like general public, let me let you know about what happened to me, kind of thing. Yeah. Like we have that platform a little bit more now too so you do see people getting mm. done dirty done wrong a whole lot more now because of that i guess but mm. i think because the platforms that we have now it's a lot easier to get done dirty right <laughs> mm. you know that that's why i think yeah people always get get done dirty you know what i mean but like i said now you have more more options to to you know to do people dirty basically ways to do them dirty yeah 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 like again like twitter the way to break someone down when they you know try to post something exciting and someone says you're not going to go anywhere with it you know what i mean like but that's a platform that's provided that allow those people to do so you know yeah. what i'm saying but even to go even a step further with that like things like fraud scams and so on how do you think we're able to do all those things you know it's because the the platforms again the technology that, that we have at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Someone can say, hey, you know, you know, I don't know if you guys got those fake messages, bro. Like, you're behind on this bill. You're like, oh, snap, I haven't paid my Netflix bill yet. You click on it, you're getting scammed, bro. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? It happens a lot, right? Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I think there's just more options. People have always been like that, right? But then now there is options for them in terms of how they want to go on about it. Mm. 
Mm. I think even yeah. like yeah, with, with celebrities as well, you know, I've just been seeing a lot of celebrities just being hated on, like one of them being Lizzo. And I'm like, she's just such a sweet person. Um, and because of like her fame and everything that's just, you know, attached to a famous person, people will just hating for no reason it's like that really destroys someone who does have a good heart you know when you're just trying to make good music trying to just be you on the social platform and people just hate for no reason like at all oh, like, no, man. it must I, weigh on her you're dumb shut up bro <laughs> <laughs> yeah. bro but no no i i actually i actually don't have a problem with lizzo um but i don't understand the obsession with her um, <laughs> i actually do it as well but mm-hmm. I will say, apparently there was this whole thing that Facebook is going to be removing like um, mean comments that, not mean, but yeah, bullying comments that I left on her kind of posts and all that. But I was thinking like, who's the weirdo that like sees a Lizzo post or anyone's post really and just goes, yeah, I'm going to comment something mean. Mm. Like, like, how does that exist in someone's brain? Yeah, It, it must be just for the likes, right? Like that's actually what it is. Holy, but even mm-hmm. like, how many people do you think have a bad mind like you that you're even going to get the likes that you want as well? I don't mm. know. Mm. I remember seeing oh man, um, this photo of like, I think it was these, like, the caption was like a meme comment under like a rapper's page or something like that. Mm. There was a photo of like these girls clearly in the trap sleeping on a futon on the, on the, on the ground, bruv. With, with, <laughs> it's like, these are the type of people that are commenting. Right. Like, like, these people ain't got nothing going for them kind of thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, well, Chance put it this way, probably many other people have said it too, like, take, why take something personal from someone who doesn't even know you personally as well? These people are just... Mm. That's the thing. For no good reason. But I did see Lizzo, now that you mentioned it. Um, I remember seeing this video, because <laughs> I think someone kept, people were saying something about her bed, or whatever, like how does your bed like support you or something like that? Oh, okay. oh my god! Right, and she like she like just dumps onto her bed. <laughs> like, Come on, see the bed. <laughs> oh no! I will say she has a very good sense of humor. Yeah. Like, Why y'all keep saying this, bro? Like my bed is broken. <laughs> oh, that's actually hilarious. I got lie. Oh, she's right. funny. Right, even her handle, Lizzo be eating. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta make fun of yourself before other people do it. A hundred percent. You let them know that you're doing. I will say the reason why there is an obsession with her potentially is because there's a combination of yeah, some people who generally like are on the like support and like trying to like lead, leading to love yourself, all that kind of thing there. But there's also the fake side of it of people just like, bro, you know that something is is not even necessarily healthy or should be the standard that you cl- give people applause for. Mm. Because you're on this whole yeah, yeah not love yourself vibe like mm. yeah yeah i get it it is v- like i don't know why that's being champ like that side of things like i'm all for like love yourself regardless of how you look but like keeping people in an unhealthy state is not good like that like it's not health like that yeah. you can admit that yeah I, I agree but yeah everyone love yourself the way kanye loves himself <laughs> no i gotta love kanye bro Stop. Hey, Gweezy, bro. Donda. Let's talk, man. Let's talk. Let's talk that talk. Well, All right. Let's get into it. The only two that have listened to this at the moment, eh? Yes. No, I got my speakers. I'm here to blast the music but too, reckon, Yeah, You guys can comment on the antics that were, or just the whole rollout beforehand too, because we all kind of mm-hmm. saw them things. What's, what's mm-hmm. all our thoughts on just, yeah, if, everything he does leading up to an album job, man? Mm-hmm. What's one and there, fam? The most? Very interesting. I don't know. It just seems like it's he does the most for it. Okay, um, but I guess I guess with like let's say this album, yeah, because Kanye does do the most, one hundred percent. Like this album, I guess has anything been that shocking or out there? Nothing's changed in terms of what he's been doing yet. Like just the messiness, the great performances that happened before an album even drops, mm-hmm. um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, for me, there was just one really messy thing, which was um. The third, because you know, obviously he did the first show in Atlanta, second show in Atlanta, and then the third one in Chicago. And in the Chicago one, he brought out um the baby and Marilyn Manson, right? Which oh, about them pets. for me was wait, 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 is that the same one where Kimosa came out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. And so for me, the thing is uncomfortable with the baby and Marilyn Manson is like like it was a song with all three of them together, right? Um and 
obviously the baby's just gone through his whole uh issue with like the homophobic statements and all that kind of stuff and then marilyn manson's literally had a million rape accusations his way like recently and so to kind of like pull these guys out right. <laughs> it kind of sounds like the start of a bad joke you know like a rapist a bipolar and a homophobe walk into a bar or something <laughs> <laughs> but that that was weird to me and to be honest that like when you do listen to the album it's a there's a couple songs that he's done two versions of and that song is one of those is Marilyn uh, Manson actually on that song yeah you know when you hear like in the chorus a bit of like more oh yeah, yeah. Like, white voice I guess or like a rock voice is that yeah yeah true jail part two yeah 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 ah uh, that is my- otherwise rollout was cool to me it was actually very cool especially rebuilding his house inside the stadium in chicago mm. that was sick the the listening parties that people got to see on like apple music and all them things there as well man yeah. did, did anyone watch any of that stuff i didn't watch them even though like yeah. I'm, I'm people like, clips yeah, I, yeah. I, didn't watch it. I didn't end up watching any now yeah mm. me neither but bro the album the album <laughs> Okay, okay. It's hard. I don't want to ruin it for these guys, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You try to keep it on a uh, yeah, on a high level. All right. Is the, the my favorite thing about the album is that it actually sounds like every phase of Kanye's career in one. Thank you, bro. Yeah. So there's some songs where you'll hear it and you'll be like, "Oh, this really sounds like Jesus." Which, by the way, Jesus sounds a lot better now than it did when it came out. I agree on you. Yeah. Play it again. Was like, this is actually really good. Mm. Yeah. But then there's stuff where you're like, oh, this is just rapping, rapping, like college dropout. And then there's singing, and you're like, oh, this is 808s. And all it's like, it's really rolled up into one. Yeah, and then you get a little cheeky bit of Life of Pablo in there, mixed in there. 100%. Uh, Jesus is king throughout it, too, bro. You 100%. Know? A little bit more drill throughout it, which I guess is a more modern twist. Mm-hmm. Um, even though you reckon it's better than his, You reckon it's better than his uh, previous album? Better than Jesus yeah. King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. This one will also last longer than Jesus King. Because I like that album a lot. So yeah. I reckon I might like this even more. Yeah. yeah. So would I, you put in your top uh if you have Kanye's uh album, his list? What are you putting this one? Kanye is hard because Kanye is one of the few artists where it's like I genuinely put all of his not all, but like out of his what nine albums, I put like seven of them at number one. <laughs> like it's they're all yeah, it like I can't pick. Uh right. bro, to be honest, I'm looking at it right now. Like if I, I have to pick one, one as the best, it has to be my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Mm. That's, that's oh no way. Coming in at a, like a strong second. <laughs> it's like the same with seven oh. of them. <laughs> no, <for one>. Yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. Like I genuinely can't pick them. Bro. Okay, now let's chat. Let's it's kind of the only guy you struggle putting his thing in order his albums in order because normally yes. other rappers it's pretty straightforward yes. right you do like yeah this easy number one this easy number two yeah this one is the one that i struggle a lot with as right. well yeah. because of the diversity of the type yeah. of music that's put exactly. out exactly like, cultural uh-huh. circumstances surrounding when he's dropping in terms of like things he's doing things that are happening in in society as well there's a different feeling and a time and space that they bring you back to different award show ceremonies, antics that he did. You know what I mean? Like all of these albums have a certain definitive moment that they can get attached to mm. as opposed to something that was just dropped when it was just dropped. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I think that's yeah. because whatever he drops dictates how music sounds for the next few years. Wow. Right? Wow. And so, so for example, he drops Yeezus and a lot of time what he drops first will get a lot of hate, right? Yeah. And so, and even, so that's before... Um, like I guess before any of us were really listening to music or anything, like he drops College Dropout 2004, a lot of people were like, oh, this is a weird kid wearing backpacks and Louis sweaters <laughs> and all the, the polo rugby yeah. shirts and all that stuff and doing the old, old like samples from 60s music and stuff. But then you look at every rapper's catalog 2004 to 2008-ish and you're like, it's all got those old school samples and all that kind of stuff as their hit songs you know and then yeah. afterwards maybe two, i think 2008 he drops graduation and it's all these new kind of sounds and a little bit more of the auto tune and stuff and same with 808s and heartbreak and you're like oh from there everyone starts doing that kind of thing and then same thing with Yeezus, all those loud sounds and the 
horns and all that kind of stuff. And at first it was like, this is disgusting. And then from there, you're like, okay, hold these guys though, you know, start running with that sound. Well, mm-hmm. Like skinhead, you're telling me you don't hear that kind of vibes on Dam as well? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you're getting on the Kendrick Dam, bro. Like that mm-hmm. same kind of intensity you're getting on yeah. up, Head Off Jesus or like New Slaves and all that. Yeah. Kind of yeah. I think bro. one of the strengths of this Donda album though is the features. The features are really good. Bro. Like, I'm surprised because making a 27 song album and I'm all against long albums nowadays. I think more than <laughs> more than 16 tracks, you've actually lost the plot. <laughs> I think 12 is more than enough for anyone. Mm. But for him, 27 tracks, I'm like surprisingly cohesive. Okay. So this is what I was looking at. All right. Yeah. Someone said this, that, okay. Production wise, the album is crazy production wise, but like in, in terms of like the, mm. right, the samples are in elite. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? And just the layering of the beats is, is, is tasty, bro. Mm. I won't put it this way. That's like, this is just an art project, bro. You know mm. what I mean? As in, a, you think about an art project in a, in primary school or like in high school, this is an art project. There's different elements. Mm. To it. There's no clear clarity just yet on what it means, what it is, is essentially stands for. But when you look at it, it's, it's beautiful in, in itself. Mm. I like, yeah, I can agree with that, bro. Because I was like, okay, what is the theme? What's the trail? Like, maybe I don't need to actually put a stamp to it. But you look at the way that the songs do line up in themselves, they complement, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? I think it sounds a little bit more like they made a two-hour song and then went, all right, let's cut it at three minutes. Let's cut it at seven minutes. That kind of thing, as opposed to... Oh, that's nice. Like that yeah. Bro. Uh, I like those kind of albums. Bam. This, this album, yeah. Bro. It- oh, an- another thing. I think you might be going down this route. I think this album is going to produce a lot of superstars off the features. Yo. Mad like, like a lot who, of like careers who? are going to become like the sounds that we hear for the next few years. Because this happened with Yeezus in 2013 as well. Because after that, Chief Keef was really the major sound. Right? And, and for a couple of years before as well, to be honest. But it's like after that. And I think this is going to happen again now with 5 year Foreign, obviously Lil Baby, Bori, all these guys. Bro. Okay. No cap, yeah. It's elite for this guy, right? To put together an album where you've got, let me just list some names real quick and then I'll tell you why I list these specific names. Yeah, you have men like Abel, The Weeknd, yeah. Mm-hmm. You got Lil Baby. You got, um, what's his face? Fabio Foreign, yeah. Chris Brown, right? These people here singing and rapping and talking about stuff that points back toward God, bro. Mm-hmm. My guy, how you go? Like for one, Lil Baby and The Weeknd was the collaboration we did not know we needed, bro. <laughs> Unreal. Bro. And my days. Oh, we'll go into this a little bit more because it's the Lil Baby era, hundred percent. It's confirmed today. I've heard that so many times. Nah, nah, Lil Baby's the way now, bro. It so is. Hold on to Lil Baby because there's there's talk. We like, have to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My guy had Abel singing. I know you won't let me down. Like. Mm. I'm out here walking on water. Father, don't let me drown. I know you won't. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Brown out here saying, thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Make me new again. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me also say something now as well. Yeah? All of this can be flashing symbols and just sound, right? Yeah. All of this can just be sound. Because like we said, yeah, man had Marilyn Manson and the baby at the performance. Marilyn Manson, speculation around being a Satanist and all that kind of stuff. Bro, what do you mean speculation, bro? The guy burns a Bible at every concert. Oh, <laughs> said in this, and yet he's at Kanye West concert, right? I'm like, ah, mm. that's very weird. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, bottom line, none of these people could really be believing or meaning anything that they're saying. But I'm like, for the most, the bro, the gospel is the gospel, bro. Mm. For someone to still say, Lord, thank you for your mercy, make mm. me do again, or mm. Father, I know you won't let me drown, or you have a little baby out here talking about, like, you know, I mean, I had to cast my sins off the edge, you know, what I mean, I was like. Mm. Oh, the words are still the words, bro. Like, mm. I'm like, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, that's it's powerful, bro. <laughs> yeah, nah, hey, there's a lot going on, man. The way the beat builds in heaven and hell, bro. Like, mm. it cuts and then it just comes back. I, I'm a caller right now. I'm gonna confidently say mm. we're gonna hear that on a lot of commercials. That particular song right there, mm. commercials like car commercial, commercials, sport commercials. Heaven and hell is gonna be on that for sure, bro. I think we're gonna hear a lot of the. And, and they kind of already did that with the No Child Left Behind with the Beats ad. I think you'll hear that a lot in like, um, kind of like those montages and that stuff. Mm, for sure. 
So does the whole album have like a religious aspect to it? Yeah. It's an undertone throughout the whole thing. Not even necessarily undertone. But oh, it's but overt, actually. Yeah, quite overt in most of them. The titles of the songs themselves, bro. Yeah. Like, you know what yeah, was yeah. sick? The titles, yeah. Legit. The song with um Ariana Grande. No, it wasn't Ariana, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, like everyone thought it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a song with her and I can't remember who else it was. It's not Playboy Cardi, but someone. But then also Donda West is on it, and it's like it's sick. They've taken a part of her speech and made it sound like she's finishing the chorus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that's that's pretty dope. Um, Lord, I need you. Dangerous. New again. Lord, dangerous. My favorite song is probably Twenty Four. Mm. Oh, Hurricane Elite this comes in very strong second, bro. Probably mm. also borderline sharing the podium with 24. Yeah. Bro, off the grid, goodness gracious. Five or four and rapping for two minutes? Yeah, long day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is the the best verse on the whole album, I reckon. Bro, out here pronouncing Ooh. whose verse? <laughs> Five or four's verse on off the grid. Like, I think that's my favorite song so far in terms of a rap song mm. out of all of them. The guy literally, and I love that Kanye let him do this. He just gave him the beat. Switched, honestly, switched up the beat to be more drill. Switched, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, which is beautiful because that's Fabio's thing. Mm. And then he let him rap for, I'm pretty sure it's like two minutes, bro. <laughs> and the guy was just going off and off and off and off. And it was like, I was, I was saying to Daniel earlier, actually, like the guy is 31, I think, 32 maybe. 31. And only like in the last two years has really taken off. Mm. but he's taking off now and it's like i think after this he's gonna be on everyone's albums and everyone's gonna want to feature and it's like Damn. it's exciting I mean, you're already getting with like, was... uk collabs as well and all that kind of mm. stuff yeah man i'm keen to listen to this album man no it's it's you got jumped on a quick album, yeah. album, like, uh, 9 30 i was ready to go to sleep yesterday and then i got like five texts everyone in the 10 p.m it's gonna drop it's gonna drop I'm like, okay so you say stay up Yep. I listened yeah. to like half of it or just over half. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to duck out. I then, remember Daniel at 11 p.m. He's like, I have to listen to it now or else it might not be here tomorrow. So I was going to listen to it straight away. <laughs> hey, 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 to be honest, that, that's a kind of thing to do. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, I can't be bothered right now, man. I was like, oh, I'm just, yeah. oh, just going to have faith that it's still going to be here in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> I downloaded it, bro. I'm like, hey, man, I can't trust this guy, bro. It's very yeah, annoying like, how he can do that. Mm. Like, legit, we'll come back to this, the the album a week later, and it's it's probably not gonna. It's a new instrumental and everything. <laughs> I still have the original version of the life of Pablo. Pablo, they yeah, took yeah. down, and I honestly I prefer that, especially the ultra light beams. The first version ultra didn't have some of the extra sound and all that. Yeah, and I was like, oh, it's amazing. And then yeah. now a, it's all different. A feature I realized I love in songs is. Pause here. <laughs> that masculine choir, bro. Yes. There's a, it adds something. Like, I remember I was listening, there's a song by her. I think it's Focus. I think yes, it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And think, you, have, yeah. you have that background of the masculine choir, the, oh, all of that going on. Bro, that just does something to a song. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It does something, bro. And you just, you have that on 24. That's why I think that's why I love that song so much, mm-hmm. bro. It's just. So your favorite song is 24, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, 24 Hurricanes and Off The Grid up there, bro, you know what I mean? But then, okay. bro, um, Lord, I, Lord, I Need You or something. What is it? What's that song? Yeah, Lord, I Need You. Oh, my days. I think bro. Keep My Spirit Alive is very nice. It's the one with uh, the guys from Griselda, Westside, Conway, which is hilarious because those guys, all their raps are literally just about cocaine and like, <laughs> selling bricks and stuff. That leads me on to something as well. It's I like, or oh, it's interesting to see how, like, yeah, pretty much everyone is um is essentially censored on, yeah. on the whole album. Yeah, yeah, like everyone's censored on the album, bro. <laughs> like I remember I was listening, I'm like, um, and I knew, <laughs> I knew the word that was exactly meant to be where someone said it. And I was like, wait, what just happened there? And I look at it, I'm like, oh bro, yeah, none of these songs are explicit, bro. <laughs> yeah. The really nice thing is normally when they bleep, they'll get they'll do they'll do the obviously the main thing where they drop the explicit and then they drop the uh censored right and the censored is just a bleep like it's not good this one they mixed it very well so it doesn't feel like you're missing a verse mm. or a word sorry yeah. like, you, you know because of the type of music that we listen to anyway you know what's going to go there but mm. like yeah even even down to like even just censoring even the mentioning of like um even the mentioning of code words that people use yeah 
things too. It's also like a bleeped out kind of thing. So I'm like, it's interesting, man. But yeah, it's it's not potential album of the year or what? I, I don't know yet. We haven't heard Certified Lover Boy, bro. Yeah, and only a couple days away as well. Lecrae with Church Plus 4 on the way. Oh, um, well, that's not going to be album of the year, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Andy Minia coming through the <laughs> land too, bro. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of like, you, you know damn well that's not going to be the running, bro. Yeah. I, I'll just before we jump like off the Donda anymore. stuff. Yeah. Um, One thing that I thought was very dope, especially because people would say, you know, the whole thing of like, Kanye doesn't care about his people and Kanye doesn't care about like people in general and all that kind of stuff. I really, really like the Larry Hoover Jr. Um, interlude where he starts talking about his dad and he like pretty much gave him what? It was about a minute and a half or two minutes of the album where he starts talking about his dad. And for like anyone that doesn't know, obviously Larry Hoover Sr. is um, the founder of the Gangster Disciples in Chicago, which was like a gang. And he's doing, I think, 200 or 250 years in jail. Um, for like it's it's murder and then afterwards they gave him more time for apparently running the gang from the prison but it's pretty debatable you know like it's not it's kind of one of those things where it's possible that the government just wanted to pin him or the feds wanted to pin him or whatever because he is the leader of this thing and so it's pretty interesting to see like like Kanye allow the, the junior to you know speak for like that long about like his dad and what his dad meant to the community and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was pretty dope. Mm. Wow. The song that definitely didn't need to be there was Tell the Vision. I think it is. The Pop Smoke one, yeah? These guys are just rinsing these Pop Smoke vocals. Because I was, I'm like, bro, man, like Pop is so tragic what has happened to him, bro. Mm. What happened to him? I'm like, I don't want to unnecessarily hear his voice. You know what I mean? So this is the annoying thing. So you know how they dropped that not so good Pop Smoke album recently? I don't listen to it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So that was done without any of his main producers. It wasn't like it was just clearly a thing to make more money. Mm-hmm. And um Tell the Vision was on that album. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. It's just it's the song that's featuring Kanye and Pusha T, except they took Pusha T off for this album and all that kind of thing. And um they kind of just switched it up. But it's just like yeah, and apparently they've run, they've almost run out of like pop smoke yeah. vocals and stuff now at this point, like because they've just rinsed it. But yeah, it, that was probably the only song where I was like, I don't really need this. It was unnecessary, in there. Obviously, yeah. the song, the album is Donda, and the beginning song is a chant. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm have to start praying in tongues, bro. That's, that's <laughs> <what I'm saying. laughs> the first song of the album, hundred percent, should have been Moon. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Moon, Moon yeah. is. Great intro or outro potentially, but as a, I reckon it would have worked as a great intro for that album for sure. Yeah, for but, uh, sure. That was, yeah, that was key, man. Geez. This, this girl that, in the States was at the um, second show in Atlanta. And she goes, when we heard the Donda intro, like where they just say Donda, 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 she was like, it really felt ritualistic, but the creative side of me really appreciated how you could say someone's name 200 different ways. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's interesting, man. It was it was funny because I'm listening to that. I'm like, I don't know, are you taking some digs at Kim or are you like praising her at the same time? <laughs> like, what do you where do you stand with her right now, bro? Like, what's up? I would love to hear that y'all uh like back together kind of thing or whatever. I yeah, I was, I was curious what's going on with that as well. Apparently, apparently they're working on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, yo, you're out here taking a couple of jabs and some of the music, but then you're also like bigging her up. I'm like, I don't know where to stand. <laughs> I, I think it's fine. If it's art, it's fine. Man, instead of it's art, bro, my mom, all right. because you're not taking digs. Nah. Like, you're not saying, like, my wife sucks. Nah, it's bro. <laughs> if you listen to <laughs> so. Maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, so it's, so it's kind of funny, bro. My guy's talking about, like, don't don't come to me with your start of business at 16. <laughs> like, oh, yes, yes, yes. See, I didn't see that one as a dig. The, the one that's about like oh, at 16 you could have a Benz I couldn't afford an Audi that kind of thing yeah uh, talking about like um damn uh, man. about the money and it's like I make more money than you bro like, I hate when we talk about money <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey, it's still Kanye uh, that was, uh, yeah that, that is Kanye though yeah it's interesting man but mm. I think ultimately I just like bro like it, like I said even if it is all just noise and none of these words mean anything bro like yeah legit it's good noise album is out here pointing back to god mm. bro um who was it um 
yeah, J Electronica on a song called Jesus Lord. <laughs> J Electronica is very confusing because he's also like, I know he's Muslim, but he's a five percenter, which means, which is, or like, like I'm pretty sure he's five percent. He's like part of the nation of Islam and a five percenter, which is like, they believe, I'm pretty sure I, I could be butchering this, but they believe the black man is God mm. or something along those lines. And so like, they even have like acronyms for things like, like they'll say Allah, but it's like arm, leg, leg, arm, head. So it's like the human body. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I could be butchering it, but I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. But um, yeah. So it's like he adopts Christian things as well as, more islamic stuff in his music but like i think for him like jesus is isa not the god jesus just the prophet it is just, it's just funny to have you have him on a song like jesus jesus lord and then yeah. uh, what's that song with chance again um how great is our god oh god bro like <laughs> bro, it's just it's just interesting like yeah man like mr um mr salam alaikum himself yeah <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my days! Oh my days, bro. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a nice album, bro. It's, it's mm. I think ultimately it's just a nice album to listen to. It might not be your favorite, mm. but there's some great songs on there, bro. I think ultimately it just confirmed that Lil Baby is the greatest rapper of this generation. Currently, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I don't think i like. There's a couple rappers every generation, or one rapper every generation that becomes the guy that every artist wants to feature from mm-hmm. artists that are bigger and artists that are smaller has all the club songs, has all the female songs has like everything on his radar. Right. Yeah. Like, and I think like, I guess what generations I've crossed over to listen to music, it goes Eminem first and then 50 cent and then Kanye and then Drake and now it's Lil Baby. You can we jump from Drake to Lil Baby? I don't think anyone came between Drake and Lil Baby only because Drake ran it for right. so long. What a line. Oh, oh, what a line oh I don't know. Are you saying Young Thug? I can't hear you, Daniel. Oh, yeah, I was going to say Borderline Young Thug, but I don't know if it was to the same gravity. Young Thug. Borderline. Young Thug had time for like two, three years. Young Thug had an error, bro. I think Young Thug had <laughs> an influence. An okay. Mm. I don't know if he had. Uh, yeah, he definitely did have. Like, and he still will have an era. A bit oh, like a. Uh, I see Thug a bit more like Travis Scott, where Travis Scott does have massive influence, but no one's ever gonna be like you're that rapper. It's not the Midas Touch rapper, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think Young Thug can open up that that new way of rapping, man. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, he's a trailblazer for sure. Yeah, Bro. so I'll give him that. But I never thought of him as the guy. Oh, shoot. I'm missing one. Lil Wayne. I think, I don't know if I said Lil Wayne, but Lil Wayne, that's because I was going to say Lil Baby's the one that reminds me of Lil Wayne. Mm. Lil Baby reminds me of Lil Wayne. Where he'll do all these features for guys that have like 20,000 followers. Yeah. You know? And then he'll also do a feature for J. Cole. Right. Uh, Lil Baby Kill Me is like, yo, I don't know why who keeps making all these cartoons of me smoking my peers in the, in the studio, but like, keep doing it, but like, bro, you're causing beef for me, bro. <laughs> I love it. I love that guy so much. Bro. The music is unreal. He's doing some nice stuff on these beats, bro. Bro, it has become to the point where it's not mumble to me. I understand the whole thing. Dude, Lil Baby. Yeah. Now Lil Baby is easy to understand compared to compared to the other rappers, low key. Mm. There's been a bro. At some point, people probably didn't even understand what the heck. Um, yeah, like a Fifty Cent was saying. Mm. Oh, no, mm. nah, that's right. <laughs> Oh, legit. There was a point, bro. Yeah. There was a point in time where people would not have understood who, who's from Houston, who's someone from Houston. Oh, yeah. The Houston guys slur their words, bro. Oh, there's a point in time. Mike Houston. Jones and all those guys. Nah, nah, I'm sipping syrup. <laughs> Bowling. <laughs> Memphis rappers, bro. Yeah, nah, there's a point in time. Anybody know what the heck you're saying, bro? Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> weird, man. Nah, it's, so you guys it's saying cool like the baby is the, like, hottest one right now all i'm saying yeah if Lil baby bro goes down this path yeah that he's on right now he's he's working yeah. with Kanye west he's worked with kirk franklin he might have the greatest gospel album of all time coming up at some point in his career bro. yes <laughs> also i think Lil baby is definitely going to be one of the only artists from this generation that my kids will still hear his music mm. 
not because yeah. of me but just because like it'll have those classic because- songs that come on every now and then at a party or whatever mm. and he'll always be relevant i reckon little mm. baby is one of those rappers that will definitely stay relevant yeah yeah um i think for me the interesting thing with him as well is like he's really proven himself because he went from a guy that was like yo can this guy rap or not and that was like a genuine feeling that people had towards him to now he's done features almost back to back with drake cole and uh kanye and he has been the most memorable verse on all those songs (laughs) and he's done that with drake a couple times to be honest oh my days right oh man yes it's mad yeah Nice man, it'll be nice to see you, bro. Hey man, we'll, you should see little cheeky Kanye on Church Clothes 4, bro. Imagine that. Well, uh, apparently, there might be a real th- thing because they've been they've been speaking apparently for a hot minute, bro. Yeah, and Lecrae, Lecrae has teased it a couple Lecrae times Kanye. on like socials. It's too many times Lecrae has, bro. So, well, people are like, Oh, it'd be cool if you did a song with Kendrick or Kanye, and he's like, mm? <laughs> 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 Hey. Loving down, bro. What a year music, bro. What a year to know. I'm very excited about this whole year musically. Yeah, but it's just crazy how we can't enjoy it outside. Mm-hmm. Also, shout out to Belly. Oh, uh, you- what? They dropped something, yeah, or what? Yeah, dropped the album. See you next Wednesday. And uh, for me, it's very exciting because like, I like to see Middle Eastern uh, artists in general like oh, yeah. do good. But he's like, it's a really good album. My sauce, my sauce. Yeah. You should, because it's got a lot of the weekend influence through it, because they're signed to the same guys. Yeah, hey, weekend, nice with it, bro. Yeah. The weekend. Hmm. Yeah, I like them. There's but... a lot happening in the music industry, eh? Too much. You don't stop for them. All I can say is Friday couldn't come any sooner, bro. Uh, yeah. What's yeah. Friday? Is that Certified Drake? Certified lover boy. Apparently so, bro. But, uh, so they confirmed now for Friday? But this is the thing, yeah. I was on the vibes of like, all right, I want Kanye to drop first. Like, even if it dropped on the same day, I was going to listen to Kanye to get out the way. So, mm. I can yeah. but Kanye has done something, bro. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I was genuinely going to enjoy the majority of the music. So, yeah. So, how, I mean, how are see... people's albums like rated now? How do you, how can you tell if someone's doing better? Like, where do you go to see that? Is it still like? the charts or how many download streams what is it nowadays mm. i think nowadays like and, and i guess forever you can't really rate how good an album is based on sales mm. um it's a massive indicator in terms of cultural influence of course and it's an important one like you can't you can't tell me someone had a classic album if they, if not everyone thinks that, you know what I mean? If only their fans think that it's not a classic, right? It's just a cult classic, which yeah. is fine, but it's not that big of a deal. But then it's like, in terms of how good quality an album is. Yeah. Like, I don't think the sales necessarily will always reflect that mm. because freaking, you know, these like major, major artists, like your yeah, Ed Sheeran's Taylor Swift's, they can drop a song and it will have like with like, if it does bad, it's going to have 45 million streams. Yeah, yeah. You know? Aside from that, if it does well, Taylor Swift made a song talking about Shake It Off, bro. Like, <laughs> See, yeah. There you go. Right? Like, like, Taylor Swift level, is bro. unmatched. She's, yeah, different conversation. Taylor but... Swift, Justin Bieber, mm. yeah, them two. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's another good drop. The with that... for Made in Lagos. Bro, Big Mood? Oh, oh, yeah. Four more songs to shake my butt to. <laughs> Oh my days! Oh man, mood. Oh my days. Mood. Yeah, it's nice, man. All I'm, yeah, I just, I'm just trying to enjoy these things with my people, them, in the outside, bro. Yeah. Thank you, or something. You know what I mean? A drive. I don't know where we're going, but you're just driving down Albert Park area, bro. You know what I mean? With the beach on the sides. Yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, That's the right there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I need a road trip. Okay. Yeah. we need a road trip i don't care if it's even if it's just us four like and uh any extensions <laughs> <That's> an extension. <laughs> <laughs> no like legit we should do that that would be very good vibes yeah mm. i have to make that happen for sure because hey grand final weekend or what no oh, no we're what still gonna that? be locked down can't go hey, what is that that's the end of this one 
Brad Melbourne, man. Come on. <laughs> this is the most is unlivable person? city. Mm. To me, I went on a road trip today for work, though, and oh my, I actually like almost cried because I just missed the outside. Like the weather was beautiful. I was driving by the beach. Like it was oh, just so amazing. Bad, yeah. Like I'm, uh, I miss being outside. Like it's so weird to say, but it's like I actually miss doing stuff outside and being outside. You it's know, like, did I tell you guys I lost my temper at somebody? No. Yeah, yeah. You definitely stressed, bro. What happened? <laughs> like, in the what? elevator? Did I tell you guys about this? Oh, what? This was maybe two weeks ago. And like the crazy thing is, I know I'm in the wrong, technically, <laughs> right? Oh, but no. I just had enough. Yeah. So I step in the elevator and I'm not wearing my mask. The building I was in, uh, I'm on level seven. I'm going down to the ground. Yeah. It stops at level six. And this like woman gets on 100% Karen vibes, bro. Like from when she stepped on. And she looks at me and she goes, you're not wearing a mask. Yeah. And I look at her and I'm like, no, I'm not. All right. And she goes, (laughs) well, that's not good enough. Like, do you not care about the community or stuff? And I looked at her, I was like, like, because I know I'm in the wrong technically first of all no one else should be in this building because no one's an essential worker in this place so don't tell me you care right but i looked at her and i said you literally looked into the elevator and had the option to not get on mm. come on talk it talk <laughs> and she just started <laughs> flustering bro and then, <laughs> right she's like, you know, this is how we end up like sydney blah 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 blah, blah. and i looked at her, i was like I literally just, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and then we hit the ground and, <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> wow. I was like, I'm not doing this conversation, bro. Oh, bro, no Damn. way. You, you should have called her Karen. You should have said, stop being a Karen. <laughs> no, I, went, I ended up going back to the, because I only went down to get my food because I was at work, yeah. Um, I go back to the office and I was like, I go to my boss. I was like, hey, you might get a call from the building manager. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. But hopefully the city opens up. Yeah, it's actually getting mad depressing, bro. Life used to be so enjoyable. You know that weekend we all went out and played soccer with the boys? Yeah. Right before this lockdown six? Yeah. Like, that just felt so good, man. That was amazing. Right, now, that was so good. now that I'm fitter as well, bro, I'd enjoy it 10 times more, bro. 100%. Wasn't that like two weeks ago? Yeah, I'm talking like it was a lifetime ago. I know. That kills me. Hey, bro, <laughs> this guy said, now that I'm fitter. I know. I feel like it wasn't two weeks ago. I've never had stamina like this now, bro. <laughs> what did you say? What is it? I've never had stamina like now, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I am ready, fam. Like, yeah, endurance. Endurance, bro. These runs, my guy. I'm, I'm just surprising myself each time now, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. why haven't I been doing this my whole life, man? Right. No, let's go for a run tomorrow. Now relax, bro. <laughs> Wait, what? You get me. Are you ready for 10K run tomorrow or what? I'll be dumb, bro. Chill, man. I'll go work right after that. <laughs> bro, 10K is a long distance. I don't know how people just do this. Like, oh, I need to run today. Okay, 10K. Like, no, actually- I think I've pushed it to what? Five point something. Mm. And I was like, yeah, I'm not five ready. Five still kills. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not ready for 10K yet, bro. Like, 10K, I'm definitely doing five kilometers run, five kilometers walking, bro. <laughs> like, nah, that's good enough, bro. I'll yeah. catch you in two hours. <laughs> that's a good start. That, that, that's a good start. Nah, that's mad. I did 9Ks the other day, like 3Ks running, and then I came, picked up my dad, we went for a 6K walk. That's what's up, man. Do your kilometers. That felt good. Eps up, brother. Yeah. 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 All right. Is that us? Yeah, that's us, man. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of the Disruption Podcast. We appreciate you still supporting us, man. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, some of the new musics and all that that's coming out, but hopefully we get to enjoy this city a little bit more as well once we get to come out. <laughs> oh. <Hey, hello>. uh, <laughs> we'll catch you on episode 108. Peace. One love. Mm-hmm.